Did you notice that the gospel's all over the place? It's a whole, just a series of sayings. And there's one thing important to remember about that. When the evangelist wrote down this gospel, it's not that he had the Holy Spirit whispering in his ear. Picture a high school freshman writing her first term paper, especially in the days before the computer. Guys, you don't remember those days. I grew up with no computers. Remember how you had to photocopy all sorts of things and all sorts of sayings and you would cut them out and paste together and then hand it to mom to type it out? That's what the evangelist probably did. He took sayings from the teachings of Jesus. Jesus actually said this stuff, but not all at the same time. Mark didn't know when he said it, so even the fathers of the church say he gave us good information. He just didn't know when it happened. Isn't that great that even a gospel which presents the word of God isn't quite perfect? Gives us a chance, doesn't it, as Catholics? Now, two of the sayings. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Does, guys, second graders, does that sound right? Something's wrong there, right? <laughs> Jesus was Jewish, and in his days, Jewish people spoke with exaggeration. You still see a bit of that. Have you ever been near New York City on Memorial Day weekend? There's gonna be the greatest sale in the universe. You've never seen one like that. Well, Jesus says, yeah, those are Pharisees, they strain out the little bugs and then they swallow a camel. <laughs> it's exaggerated, it's a little bit too much. And so what is the lesson that we can learn from that? If we know that a certain situation is gonna cause us to sin, sometimes being a good Catholic means saying no, as well as saying yes. That we have to limit ourselves to those temptations, to, to things that are bad. For example, when you're taking a test and you see the kid next to you has his paper wide open, don't look that way. <laughs> Keep your eyes on your own desk because otherwise you'll be tempted to copy it. And if you copy it, you might be copying the wrong answer anyways. That, and when you're tempted to talk back to your mom, what should you do? Hold your tongue, right? Don't say everything that comes to your mind. That we have to be careful because there's a lot of thing, wrong things we can do. Now the last saying, we're like salt. We as Christians, should be the salt of the earth. Add flavor to it, add zest to it. We should be excited about who we are. People should see when we leave mass that we've been changed. Have you ever gone home after mass and start yelling at somebody? <laughs> and their logical question, gee, you must have gotten angry at mass, why? We have to give witness. And I once heard a talk, a professor said, we should like, be like the second graders when they find out that one of their exams has been canceled and everybody gets an A. How do you react? Real loud. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if we reacted that way? Go into mass. <laughs> Instead of saying I have to go to mass as if it's a, a burden, to say, oh good, we're going to Mass. Isn't that a joy? Oh good, I get to forgive that person who cut me off in traffic. Isn't that a grace? Right? <laughs> oh good, at the grocery store, I get to say good morning to the person checking me out and to smile. Because maybe that person needs to see my smile. To be thrilled that God has given us the opportunity to do good things. So guys, when you get home, you're gonna do good things for your parents, right? I didn't hear you yell out yes. <laughs> you were real happy about the exam being canceled. <laughs> now at the end of mass, after I give the final uh, prayer, we're gonna have a special blessing for the uh, teachers and for the assistants, and then a special blessing for our second graders. And I'll ask all of us to 
impose our hands when we give that blessing.